Hello, welcome back to 40 Days with the Fathers. Today we're on day 24, still in Athanasius's Life of Anthony, looking at chapters 31 to 40 of his text. So today we continue with Anthony's exposition on the tricking deception of demons who try to cause the faithful to stumble and be fooled by their power. You don't often hear much taught on this area of Christian spirituality these days, at least not in the church circles I've been in in the last few years, and not so much in as depth as you can read here by Anthony's teaching. So even from my own various experiences with this type of thing, I can attest to what Anthony is teaching and explaining here, and it really goes to show that the level of deception that, that, demon, that demons bring Athanasius is writing this biography nearly 1700 years ago or so. And yet the demonic trickery explained here is really no different than what I've seen myself in my own short lifetime. This really goes to show that the weakness of the enemy and the lack of weapons he has to work with, if nothing else has changed that much in all this time. So our Lord really is greater and stronger. The deception of demons. Anthony really draws on just how little power these evil forces have, but also explains how they can make themselves seem more powerful than they actually are. Just in the chapters yesterday where he said that, like the apostles, we must not be ignorant of the enemy's devices, he now goes into more detail so that we may learn what these devices are and no longer remain in ignorance. Anthony goes on to explain something which is especially noteworthy, concerning any prophetic utterances demons may give, and how it's possible they can be accurate in what they foretell. I found this very interesting to read, because it's exactly the way I understand how demons work, from what the Lord revealed to me after I was delivered from demonic things many years ago. But that is a story for another day. <laughs> Anthony also clarifies that only God knows the things which are unseen, and so we may be dazzled or some may be marvelled by the foreknowledge of other spirits, but they're actually pretending to know anything about the future. Giving an example from something Anthony and others seemingly witnessed, he says that often the demons announce beforehand that the brethren are coming, coming days after, and they do come. But they don't do this to benefit the believers or because they care. No, they do this to gain the trust so that in the long run they may destroy those who place their trust in the demons. So how do they know what's coming before we know it? Anthony lays it out quite plainly, and I'll just quote him here. For what wonder is it if with more subtle bodies than men have, when they have seen them start their journey, they surpass them in speed and announce their coming, just as a horseman getting a start of a man on foot announces the arrival of the latter beforehand. So in this, there is no need for us to wonder at them. So basically, the demons just see what is already in motion, no matter how, no matter the spatial distance, and then announce it to others ahead of time, so that it has the appearance of prophecy. It's no different than when a man gets a higher perspective on a mountain top, or similar, to see things which are far off and are approaching in the distance. And to quote him again, but they know nothing of themselves, but like thieves, what they get to know from others, they pass on and guess at rather than foretell things. Therefore, sometimes they speak the truth. Let no one marvel at them for this. Just as those who study the weather or doctors who study the body get to know the symptoms and patterns, so as to be able to predict with some accuracy what is happening before it does, no one would say that these know this by inspiration, but from experience and practice, he says. It is the same way that these demons also operate. If we should desire to know the future, desire to use the gifts of the Spirit, as Paul encouraged, then it should be through our discipline to God to keep ourselves pure, so that when our soul is perfectly pure in its natural state, it is able, being clear-sighted, to see more and further than the demons, for it is the Lord who reveals it. Uh, how do we distinguish between the good and the evil? Any deceiving spirit will flee at the sign of Christ, he says. Quoting again, when therefore they come by night to you and wish to tell the future, or say, We are angels, 
Give no heed, for they lie, but rather sign yourselves with the cross, and pray that you shall see them vanish. But if they shamelessly stand their ground, Anthony warns, then fear them not, and don't think that they may be good spirits, for the presence is either for the presence of either good or evil, by the help of God, can easily be distinguished. The evil comes with much fear and distraction on our minds, so that we we are not focused right on God. Good spirits from the Lord, however, come so quietly and gently that immediate joy, gladness and courage arises in our soul. Since the Lord our God is ours, and there, joy. And the thoughts of the soul remain unruffled and undisturbed. Just as we see in scripture, when the angels came to give messages, they started with fear not, and removed all fear on those listening despite being in the presence of God and powerful beings. So he gives some helpful little advice here for the people he was teaching, which is also us as well. So he says, to discern the spirits, you do so as followed. If fear is immediately taken away and, the, and in place of it comes joy unspeakable, unspeakable, cheerfulness, courage, renewed strength, calmness of thought, then it is surely the Lord. But to the contrary, whenever the soul remains fearful, there is a presence of the enemies. For the demons do not take away the fear of their presence, as the great archangel, archangel Gabriel did for Mary and Zacharias. So, simple test. If a spirit ever approaches, or you're in a presence of one that maybe you, you can't see, if you're aware of something there and you're fearful, then it's most likely the enemy. Otherwise, if you're full of joy and peace and calm, then it is definitely of the Lord. Rebuking the enemy. Just as Jesus rebuked the devil, so we can also through the power of the spirit within us. In doing so, we must remember not to lift up those, lift up those who cast out demons or those who heal as worthy of anything more than those who do not do these things. This should not be a point of pride for us, which could make us stumble. For the working of science is not ours, but the Saviour's work. So we should keep in mind what Jesus said to his disciples on this matter. In Luke 10, verse 20. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the Spirit submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Those who boasted in their works rather than in Christ, who have sealed them, were those who will be turned away by Jesus in judgment. And so because of this, Anthony urges that we seek the gift of discernment, as John wrote in his letter, that we may not be deceived. Anthony goes on to give some more of his personal testimony to show that he is not just speaking at random, but from experience and from what the Lord has shown him. From visions and visitations of demons in disguise as angels or monks to trick him, to appearances of soldiers or beasts to scare him, to physical beatings, he spoke the name of Christ, sang psalms and kept himself in prayer. And the demons fled and disappeared like smoke. In all things, he keeps this one thing at the forefront of his mind, and we should too. Whether it be demons we face or human persecutions, the same rings true. From and he quotes Romans eight verse three, nothing shall separate me from the love of Christ. So I hope this has encouraged you to taste to stay strong in Christ, no matter the circumstances. And whatever's going on in life, that um, be encouraged. Keep Christ at the forefront of your mind. Know that nothing can separate you. And the rest of that verse, going off the top of my head, like neither life, nor death, nor angels, nor demons, nor whatever else is in there. Anything, basically. So, um, yeah. And there's nice little insights into spiritual warfare there that you might not have heard of before or be familiar with. Um worth reading as always or you know buy the book or you know see all the links below in the video description support me on patreon get gifts and free ebooks in return for some monthly donations and things or like and share the video subscribe to the channel everything all those social events so see you tomorrow for some more insights from the life of anthony